This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Sean Preston. Welcome to today's episode of the Good Neighbors Podcast. Today we have a good neighbor with us. It's Neilan from Serta Pro Painters. How's it going, buddy? Good. How are you doing, Sean? Thank you so much for having me. Hey, look, the sun is shining out today. I uh, took a chance to let the dogs out in my little break, doing back-to-back today. And I honestly almost didn't make it for this podcast because I wanted to stay out there the whole time. It's beautiful outside. I know the feeling. So hopefully uh, hopefully you'll get a chance to uh, enjoy it out there yourself. So me and you had a nice little kind of a unique way. We got to meet at a networking event. That was pretty cool. And then I started seeing you around a little bit more and more. Whereabouts are you located? Are you uh, are you down in the Newmarket area? Or are you up here in Barrie? We're down in the Newmarket area, but we also go anywhere where the work is. So that's how we, we're a traveling uh, company. It feels like you live here though, because like I see you yeah. all the time out there. Yeah, that's true. It's a hey, Barrie's a wonderful place. And uh, I really like to get, get out there as much as I can. Cool. Maybe as we develop our relationship, I'll start doing what I'm doing to Jeff and just slowly coax you into moving here. Amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I've sat down with a lot of businesses over the last year, over 350 businesses, and I haven't come across too many painters. Uh, we're partnered with a painter, uh, a great, uh, a great, I'd say a great industry. You know, color is the vibrancy to how the way we live our lives and the space in your home, in your business. Uh, is an important thing to love the love the vibe and this and the space that you're in. You help bring those to life. So tell us a little bit about your business. Yeah, definitely. So as you said, you know we help uh, homeowners, uh, business owners, even property managers with you know their interior and their exterior painting. Uh, some of the services we provide are uh, free estimates, uh, color consultations because everybody wants. Uh, some help in, when it comes to that uh, side of things. Uh, kitchen cabinets, uh, that's a very cost-effective way to bring new life into the kitchen. Uh, even popcorn removal, which is, you know, it goes wow. with the trends of how uh, people like to be in their homes. Uh, we do drywall repairs also. You know, if you have kids or animals that may make a few holes in the walls, we can definitely help uh, with that uh, aspect of things. And uh, that being said, you know, our painters are insured, they're licensed, they work at heights, they operate lifts. So think of high ceilings, high exteriors, anything that, you know, we don't really want to uh, uh, get up too high on those uh, on those ladders. So we can definitely take care of that. Uh, But that being said, no job is too small or too large. And we have a great, great set of uh, people that can uh, help on different types of projects. Nice. Nice. Seems like you guys cover a wide, a wide area of different needs, uh, for, for people. And you know, that, that gets me thinking, you said, yo, kids and animals. And I just, I just put that together. Kids who are animals and, you know, doing what they're not supposed to do, writing crayons on the walls, all kinds of stuff. Like I have to ask you, cause I'm so curious, like what's, uh, something where you came across an instance where you saw, like a disaster that maybe happened that you guys needed to maybe go in and fix. Do you have like a funny story or anything that you've come across in your, in your tenure doing what you do? Oh, definitely. There's, there's sometimes too many stories to count, but you know, uh, we did uh, work with the daycare, you know, daycares are uh, definitely uh, an area where you want to make sure that, you know, we want to protect those walls. Kids, kids, they love to do things, explore, experiment. They're putting crayons on walls. They're putting things that are questionable, which, so to speak. We don't even know what it is, but uh, you know, we give it a good cleaning and we repair everything. And you know, we, there are certain products that definitely help uh, with that kind of environment where you get a lot of wear and tear. And you know, it's, uh, that's where we come in, and we definitely can help. Uh, steer the people, the clients in the right way on what needs to be done to protect those walls and provide a long lasting uh, life for those uh, uh, those uh, areas. Yeah, uh, definitely the the product, right? The paint, the type of paint, uh, you know, goes a long way. I've been educated a little bit on it 
and stuff like that. But do you guys have a particular product that you guys are married to that, that you believe is, uh, you know, kind of what helps set you guys apart? I would say that we don't have a particular product that we work with because everybody has different needs. Uh, whether you're dealing with uh, high traffic areas, you want to put a certain type of product in business areas, whether it's warehouses and if it's homes and you have children, you want to deal with a different type of product. If you're retired, then we can put a different type of product where you don't need, where you have to have uh, scrubbable, scrubbable surfaces, such as in the kitchen and bathrooms, we'll use a different type of product. So we can really tailor it depending on what the needs of the clients are and what the purpose of the space is. Nice. Nice. I like that. Do you ever have people, I know I'm going completely off script, by the way, throwing you a couple of curveballs. No worries. <laughs> but like, I'm curious, right? Like I had, when I got my house, this, it, with the lighting, it looks not, it's flamingo pink. Okay. I've mm -hmm. got an addiction to pink flamingos for those people who don't know. And if you walk through my house, you find these little innuendos of, you know, pink flamingos that are all over the place. I heard because I had a professional come in who did my parents' house and, you know, we walk through the whole home. So I don't have four walls that are of the same. They're all accent walls. So the colors blend, but you know, I'm kind of a bit flamboyant myself in mm -hmm. certain cases and, you know, like business socks are one of them. If you can see them from yep. the space shuttle, they deserve to be on my feet. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it colors the spice of life. Right. So, uh, when people are doing that color consultation, are they, do most people kind of know what they want or are they kind of like hands up, like help? You get both sides of the equation. You have some people are very adamant about the colors that they want and they'll even pick out the codes and they'll go in, they'll go to the Benjamin Moore, the Sherman Williams, the local ones, and they'll pick out the color and they'll tell us this is what we want and this and we're not spraying away from it or they have a specific color that they had a number of years ago and they just want to keep it the same color but I would say mostly when it comes to us providing that service of the color consultations we'll look at the uh the furniture that's there and this and her name is Michelle she's great she very she knows the trends she knows what's uh what's uh in and what's out and keeping the home very updated i think that's something that uh definitely adds value to the home and also personalizes it to the to the to the individuals who use the space and she's able to figure all that out with uh with the with the client very nice very nice well this is more of the first time that we're really getting the chance to get to know one another and so I've been curious ever since we booked you on the show and I'm sure the listeners are as well, but tell us about your journey specifically and why and how did you get into this type of business? Yeah, definitely. So I've always been involved in construction. I worked for a commercial construction industry for over seven years as a construction project manager. I love what I did in terms of working with people, whether it be with other trades or the, or on the client side of things, and just really being of service to both the trades and the clients. So when this opportunity uh, came around, I, I just found that I had to jump on it. Uh, we built it up. We have now three estimator project managers. We have six crews of painters. Each crew has uh, two or three painters. and. You know, I just love uh, seeing uh, how the team and the client are really happy at the end of every project. And I think that's what uh, keeps me going. That's what it's all about, man. I was talking about it on another show earlier today. Just, you know, you got to be having fun when you're out there, right? That that passion and, and, and going out and having fun and cracking jokes and just enjoying what you do. It makes for a more fulfilling life. Uh, when you have those things in place. And so you know, I'm really happy that you, you found that in your space and your team gets to prosper and, and, and share in all of that as well. Okay, so tell me, I want to know in the painting world, I've never asked this question to a painter before. So me being the curious cat, but give me, give me like a myth, give me a misconception. What happens or what are people saying to you that are myths or misconceptions when it comes to the world of painting? That's a very good question, uh, Sean. I would say that, you know, the common misconception is that you know, all painters and all types of paint are pretty much the same. Uh, 
there are many nuances to that differentiates one project from another. Uh, that's why you have, you know, as a professional company, we aim to educate and customize our services to the client's needs. We talked about this early, but, you know, other examples can be like, is this your forever home? Are you planning on selling it? Are you, plan are you have you just moved in? Uh, is this a rental uh, property? Uh, does your office or business or warehouse space have a lot of traffic in certain areas and not in others? We, we take all these factors into consideration when we want to help out the client and making sure that we meet their needs. So no two projects are the same, although we learn from every project. I would say in the end of, at the end of the day, it really comes down to providing a tailored service to a tailored service to uh, the clients. You know, that's good to know, you know, from somebody that, you know, they go to Home Depot, pick out colors, they look at it all and just, you know, what's the difference between Benjamin Moore and Sherwin Williams? And you have some painters rave about Benjamin Moore and that's all they use. And then you have others that, you know, yeah, we use different types for different things because there are different applications for all of that. I could definitely see, you know, education in in the digital age, in the, in, in the era that we live in, it's, it's such a powerful tool, you know, cause there's so much that's at our disposal, you know, in this day and age that people can go down any rabbit hole, they can watch any YouTube video <clears throat> and they can become a quote unquote expert, you know, mm -hmm. in, in pretty much anything. Uh, but to have a tailored solution like yours, uh, and asking the right questions. I think that's paramount, man. And to people getting what they need, mm -hmm. uh, even maybe even over before what they want uh, and guiding them through that journey uh, and then make that space the best it can be, right? So that's fantastic. Okay, I got to ask you. I've yes. been waiting to ask. I love this question. It's the best question because I'm a fun guy. I like to have fun. Mm -hmm. And I can kind of tell when another dude likes to have fun, you kind of look like one of those guys. So when you're not stroking the brush, tell mm -hmm. me, man, what do you like to do for fun outside of work? You know, Sean, I'm, I'm actually a very simple guy. You know, I like to I like to conversate and talk with people. But at the end of the day, you know, I just like spending time with my girlfriend. We like to eat. We like to go out to eat. Uh, I don't tend to remember the restaurant's name since we're always trying something new. So we're a little bit uh, explorers when it comes to trying out new foods, uh, but, and we like to travel, you know, but we can all use a little bit more traveling and exploring the world, but we like to travel every now and then. And, you know, another thing is who doesn't like a good Netflix show here and there, but I'm pretty simple overall. Nice. Very nice. I'm a foodie uh love uh love shows movies same my girlfriend same way nothing like uh getting on the couch on a on back to work monday and just chilling out right exactly. but uh tell me about the food man the foods where it's at i'm a foodie i love to cook so like what are you into what kind of foods are you guys going out that you like uh spice of life kind of i like everything you like it with heat you like it with sweet what do you like yeah i would say you know i really like trying the the fusions which is like, you know, you'll have some uh, some Chinese with some Indian fusion. You'll have some Italian with some Jamaican fusion. Those are very interesting, something that, you know, because I like all types of food. So especially when you have chefs that get very creative and they blend those, uh, you know, ingredients together and you get a whole new different uh, dish over there. I, you know, it's something that uh, that's very enjoyable and very... Uh, uh, commendable to the chefs who come up with these recipes as well. Yeah. Cross pollination, man. It's where it's at. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Okay. So let's go a little bit more on the serious side. Everybody's got their journey. Some people stay on the same path. Other people come to a fork in the road. They change that path. Some people are destined to do what they started doing. Um, and life is not easy, right? Life will throw you curveballs. They'll give you things that were unexpected. You get your ups and downs with it. And people go through hardships in life. Uh, they go through challenging things in life. Could you ever maybe recollect or tell a story of maybe a, a hardship or a challenge that you went through 
in your life and how you rose above that, how that maybe made you better for it or stronger from it? Yeah, you know, you know, Sean, I would say that overall, I'm, I'm a very, I'm very blessed. Uh, but I always embrace challenges as they come as really learning experiences. Um, just, you know, career wise, early in my career, I was thrown into a managerial position. I was young, where I was responsible for building a team of over a dozen construction supervisors, just as an example. And, you know, you don't come in with a lot of experience, but you just learn through the way how to deal with people, how to really bring out the best in everybody. And I would, I would say that that definitely taught me how to, uh, to really appreciate my team and making them realize that, you know, they're the ones who really make any, everything possible. And they're one of the greatest assets. You know, you treat your people good, you treat your painters good, you treat your team good, and they'll take care of your clients. And I think that really goes a long way. People leave bosses, they don't leave jobs, right? Exactly. Yeah, I could, uh, I could relate. Uh, my time in the car business, I spent three years working for an automotive marketing agency and uh, I ascended to a managerial role and uh, became a sales director and started building a sales team. And when you build it to the lengths we build it, we had six account managers, 42 event managers. We had a large staff and mm -hmm. and uh, you, you, you treat people the way you want to be treated. And then people just want to not see you on the post. They want yeah. to see you there. They want to knock you down and you don't deserve to be there and jealousy and all kinds of stuff, man. Uh, mm -hmm. I've had my challenges and hardships trying to, you know, you, you, you treat people well and they turn around and stab you in the back. It's crazy. You know, yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's absolutely crazy, me, but better for it. Right. You you learn when you smack your face against the wall or when you fall down and that's what it's all about. You got to get back up and, and keep going and, uh, and evolve. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So absolutely loving it. Love it, man. What's, uh, what's one thing that, uh, for the listeners, what's one thing that you would like them to know about your business? I would say Sean, that just really that our team are also great listeners. Uh, you know, when our team, you know, our estimator project managers, they go into the homes, you know, share, share with us your plans, your goals for your properties and just anything really, uh, you might not know it, but this will not only help us provide you with the tailored service that you really need, but we can also be a great resource and put you in contact with the right people to be able to help you reach uh, those goals. And this doesn't just apply to before the project or even during, even after the project is done. And even whether you decide to go with us or not, we're really there to uh, help people out. We have a great, uh, you know, network of different people that can really help uh, our clients out. Uh, you're letting us into your home, into your property, into your personal space, whatever, whatever it might be. Uh, we respect that, and uh, we want to be able to help out in any way possible. So, from what I'm gathering through this nice little Q and A we got going on here is that if I'm going to bring you on board as a homeowner into my home, it's really going to be that communication level and the overall experience that I'm going to feel from your staff when they're coming into my, my space to make me feel comfortable at not only choosing the right products and services that are going to help me accomplish my goals, but someone who I can trust that's going to do a good job and, and make it as seamlessly easy as possible from my side of the fence. Is that what I'm getting? You hit the nail, you hit the, uh, the nail on the head. Uh, that's if exactly take what it is. Microphone and mic drop. That's where it's at, baby. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, that's exactly what it is. You know, it all comes down to how we treat people and, uh, it goes always right. So that's how, uh, that's how we go about doing our business. Oh, love it. And for those who uh, want to get in touch with you, what's the best way they can do that? Very simple. They can visit us at uh, certapro.com. That's C-E-R-T-A-P-R-O.com. Or give us a call at our 1-800-GO-CERTA number. That's CERTA with a C. 
Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Happy to have you. It was really nice to finally spend some time. And, uh, you know, you're always around, like I said. So I'm looking forward to seeing you at those networking events. I appreciate that, Sean. And thank you so much for uh, putting this together and having me on. Uh, having me on. No worries, brother. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Neighbors. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnpmidhurst.com. That's gnpmidhurst.com. Or call 705-413-3775.